Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We're so glad you found your way to us today. The Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor, which Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide everything that we do, our worship, our life together, and our service to the community near and far. This morning's service is our sanctuary worship service. Lyrics to the hymns will be on your screen, as well as scripture texts when the message has begun. You can also access our bulletin on churchofthepalms.org right on our home page. For those who enjoy worshiping in a more contemporary fashion, there is a contemporary service held on campus. Whichever way you like to worship, we hope you can share the opportunity with friends and family who might be searching for a church home. If you'd like more information about any of the announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which you can attend online. If you'd like to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission to love God and love neighbor. One of the easiest is online giving, the options of which you will find posted later in the service. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Welcome to the Church of the Palms. My name is Lily Brexaker, and I'm in the sixth grade at Sarasota Middle School. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. We have come together listening, God, because you have spoken your word of summons and welcome. We are drawn ears to the promise of your presence and the persistence of your call. Speak to your servants here in a way we can understand. We want to hear the message you intend for us. We want to listen, not because someone else needs to have told it to them, but because ourselves are needy sinners. Your expectations are, us, are high and holy. We tremble before you, eager for heaven to be opened in our midst for our transformation. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
is Grace, and I am in third grade at Gulf Gate Elementary School. Please stand for the responsive call to worship. God is calling. Do you not hear? You are being called by the name for a purpose. Do not confuse the siren calls of the world for God's call. Do not confuse the values of this world for God's values. Your words and your deeds are known to God. You were known to God before you were born. Let us worship God. My name is Ella Bruxker, and I'm in the eighth grade at Sarasota Middle School. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Let's confess our sin by saying the prayer of confession together. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Our lives are an open book to you. Help us to recognize in ourselves what you have seen there. Remove the distortions that keep us from acknowledging our sin. Awaken in us sorrow over the wrong we have done and the good we have neglected. Create us in earnest desire to change. O oh God, we are in touch with the pain we have caused and the pain within us. Because of your love and care, we can face and overcome the sins we are confess in Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue our confession in silence. Amen. Hear the good news and rejoice. God's voice can be heard in the silence and in the chaos and is still the same. It whispers and speaks and shouts. This truth cannot be held back. We are forgiven, I am forgiven, you are forgiven. Friends believe the good news of the gospel.
And now let us state what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right side of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he hung on the judge to the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the ever everlasting. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. As we greet one another with the love of Christ, children are invited to come forward for the children's moment. Are you cold at all? Yes? Yes? No, you're wearing the right jacket, that's why. Well, I'm glad to see you all this morning. Today is a special day. And to tell you about it, I first need to ask you a question to see if you have some answers for me. When before Jesus died and then went up to heaven to be with God, he talked to his disciples. And his disciples are sort of like they were his friends, but they were also followers. They were students of Jesus. And he told them lots of important things they needed to remember about how to live until he came back, until he saw them again. Can you think of anything that Jesus told us that we needed to do in our lives? Um, that it's okay to make like mistakes. That we would be forgiven. That's such a great answer, right? That we, he would always, always be with them. Be kind to people even though they're mean to you. <laughs> yes. Be kind to people and not to say just some people, not only the people who are nice to us. What a great answer. Act like Jesus. Try to act like Jesus, yes. And every day we get to try, try, try to be more like Jesus, right? Well, he said that all to them, but he also said it to us because now we're followers of Jesus, right? We're students of Jesus. And one of the things he said to them, which is a little bit like some of the things you share with me, is that we needed to go out in the world and we needed to tell people about Jesus. We needed to tell them about what Jesus had meant in our lives, the way Jesus has changed us. And we needed to try best as we can to act like Jesus so that they would know something important about how much God loves them and that God forgives them. And we can do that in lots of ways. How can we share the love of God with our friends here in Sarasota, like when we go to school? What kinds of things can we do to share Jesus with people? Play with them. Play with them, yes. Be kind and 
like if someone is lonely, you can ask them if you want to play. Yes, I love that. You can do that. You can be kind. You can include people who are left out. You can maybe invite them to go on a fun trip with Miss Carol or to come to Impact Kids one Sunday. Right? So we can do it by how we act and by talking about Jesus. And we can do it wherever we are, every day. But some people do this work by traveling and they go to different parts of the world to do this. And we call them missionaries. And they travel all over the world to share the love of Jesus with other people. Can you imagine what a missionary might look like? Do you have any ideas? What might a missionary look like? I kind of imagine somebody with, like, with a long beard and maybe a robe like what I'm wearing. But guess what? You're about to see. We have some missionaries here with us today. We have a group of people from our church that are leaving tomorrow morning to go to Honduras to tell people there about Jesus, to hear about Jesus from them, to make new friends and to sing songs about Jesus and do whatever they can to be helpful. So I'm going to invite now our Honduras mission team to come forward. And kids, can you move down here onto the floor so we can see them? Let's come sit on the floor and look up this way. And we'll invite the, the mission team forward. Further down, further down. Keep it scoot, scoot, scoot. Good job, good job. There you go. And then we can have our friends come in here. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. All right. So here we have our mission team. Yay! Going to Honduras. <laughs> and we have a very special opportunity now to pray for these people before they go. And we're going to do something that they've done in the church for a long, long time. Like in the Old Testament, even before Jesus was born on earth... They did this in the Old Testament, and it's called laying on hands, which is praying for people, but we're going to put our hands on them, like here or on their shoulders. So can you get up and find a way to put your hand on one of these? You could hold their hand, too. Let's see if we can't put our hand on one of these people. <laughs> they don't bite. I checked. I had them all checked before we got here. And we get to pray for them as they do this important work of, of sharing the love of Jesus with other people. And we're going to pray for them now. So can you pray with me? Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for this mission team. And we ask that you'd give them all they need to share the love of Jesus with the people of El Progreso, Honduras. Help them to represent your love and your light everywhere they go. Help them to make new friends. And while they're away, remind them of your love, our love, and the support of um, Church of the Palms, that they know that wherever they go, we're with them and we're thinking about them. Use them to bring people closer to you. Help them know ways to help others. And bring them back safely to us. And when they come home, help us to learn from them. Bless them and bless the people of Honduras. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Welcome to Church of the Palms on this sunny Florida morning. <laughs> Feels like negative, whatever it was in uh, Kansas City last night about here today. Very cold. We're grateful to have you here. What a pleasure and privilege it is to worship God with one another. Welcome. Have a couple of announcements for you today. The first of which is that Pastor Mingy will be hosting a new member class right after this service. 
allowing a gap for you to get a cup cup of coffee, and then going over to the chapel, and in the chapel, uh, she will be meeting with people who just want to hear more about Church of the Palms, more about what's going on here, what we believe, about um, the things that we have coming up, and so you might explore membership if you're not already a member here, so we encourage you to consider doing that. Again, it's at 1015 in the chapel. Also happening at 1015, we have a new Gather and Grow series happening in the Campus Center, led by Reverend Mike Murphy, and it's called Justice or Just Us. And he's going to be looking at Micah 6.8 very closely and really wondering with the people who are there what it means to be a justice-oriented Christ follower in our day and age. Will we live with clenched fists or open hands? It will be very interactive. There will be lots of questions and participation by the people in attendance. It sounds like it will be a very enriching time. So hope you might join that Gather and Grow series. It's a two-week series starting today. Again, it's in the Campus Center at 10.15 this morning. Also want to take a minute to welcome our guest musicians from the Prometheus Duo. Can we give them a, 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 a round? We are so spoiled here by just the most um, awe-inspiring, glory-giving music, and um, this is certainly no exception. We're very grateful to have them here. And this is just a foretaste of what's coming this week when on Wednesday they will be here for the kickoff of our Noon Time Concert Series. That's this Wednesday, and you have lunch at 1215, followed by a 1 o'clock concert in the chapel. So you have the opportunity to hear more from these two very talented women. You can purchase tickets on our website or at the welcome table in the courtyard to attend that concert. Also coming up this week, we will gather at Temple Sinai on Tuesday evening for a book club we are doing with them on braiding sweetgrass, which is a look at ecology and um, our care of the planet, our relationship with the earth. And if if you're hesitating because you've only read half the book or its first chapter, we encourage you to come anyway. The The questions are very inviting, and we're just excited to be growing in relationship with our sister congregation at Temple Sinai, and it's an opportunity to wonder with them what it looks like to be a good steward of the earth. And that's on uh, Tuesday night, rather, at 6.30 p.m. at the temple. Coming up, a couple of save the date items. I'm not going to give a lot of particulars because I know it's a lot to hold on to. Know that there is more information in your bulletin. But we do have our Faith and Society speaker series is continuing on January 25th with um, Dr. Eddie uh, Glaude. He's a best selling author and the chair of Princeton's Department of African American Studies. And hope you might come out for that free event. It's on uh, the 25th, which is a Thursday, I'm going to say, at 6 30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. It should be a great night. Then later that week, the Palms men are gathering again, and they have an exciting speaker coming. Kyle Snyder, the pitching coach from the Tampa Bay Rays, will be here to share amazing stories and life lessons. You can sign up for that by um, finding the table in the courtyard, or you can register via the website. Finally, our annual meeting is two weeks from today, so make sure you make arrangements to to hang out a little bit later after service on the 28th as we have an opportunity to look back at how we finished 2023, to look at all we accomplished in 2023 to celebrate together, and then, of course, to look forward to 2024 and planning together. Let us now continue our worship.
My name is Claire Steiner, and I'm in 11th grade at Pineview School. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with our hearts full of love and gratitude. In the midst of life's challenges, you wrap your arms around us. When we are lost and wandering, you show us the way. Thank you, God, for leading us. We pray for our people, both within this congregation and beyond. We pray for peace in Israel and Gaza, in Ukraine, and in all corners of your earth, where war and violence threaten your will. Let our leaders have wisdom to shepherd our world in the right path. Thank you, God, for being the light in our darkness. We pray for our people suffering in cold, hunger, or sickness. Jesus calls us to take care of his sheep and to feed his sheep. Thank you, God, for working through us. We lift up this congregation to you, God, and are thankful for the ways you work through us. We thank you for working in our family ministry department by allowing us to grow in our faith and spread our blessings to others with service and volunteering. Thank you, God, for our blessings. In times of celebration, we rejoice in your love. In times where we are lost like lambs and sheep, we look to you to be the shepherd who protects us. We give you thanks for being with us through this journey and keeping us centered around Christ our King, who you sent to save us and who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church family. My name is Connor Peters. I am the student and family ministry director here at Church of the Palms. And I am so excited to get to be with all of you in the space this morning. Typically, I am on the other side of campus during our 9 a.m. hour in our contemporary service. But we have the wonderful opportunity to get to hear from two of our students of how God has been at work in their lives and what role family ministry has gotten to play uh, as they have gotten to, 
to notice and articulate and respond to God's work uh, in their lives as they get to grow further in their relationship. Hi guys, I'm DJ and I'm in, th I'm in eighth grade at Imagine at Lakewood Ranch and I've been with the Church of the Palms family for three months now. And how is everyone today? <laughs> One opportunity that I got to participate in was the middle school fall retreat. My most significant moments were when we all got into our small groups and talked about God even more in depth and I felt like I was more connected to the group and God then. Speaking about God made me feel more comfortable with God and the group. So this community that the Church of the Palms family has a really funny and caring, caring community. And so I think that with the Church of the Palms, it has shown me that I can be comfortable talking about God and my community. Also, this semester, my faith has grown because I'm in a community where I feel welcome to talk about God. This semester, I have had strong mentors who are great, trustworthy, and funny. I have heard really good messages about God with the youth group, and these messages have brought me to feel more connected to God. With the Church of the Palms family, I am most grateful for having my new friends and family here and also being able to speak about God with the community here at church. So this year, I am most looking forward to Montreat this summer where they sing and talk about God, and I feel that it would bring me even closer and more connected to God because I will be able to trust and be even more comfortable praying. Thank you, Church of the Palms, for supporting family ministry. My name is Sean Ortlieb, and I am a junior at Sarasota High School. I have been attending Church of the Palms and Youth Group for a little over a year now, and in this time, I have formed some great friendships and collected countless memories. Attending the youth group has provided me the opportunity to take several trips where I have been able to witness the positive impact of God. My first adventure with COP Youth Group was a high school mission trip to Alaska. Initially, I was nervous about traveling so far without my parents and people I was not familiar with, but I was fortunate to do the trip with my sister. While we were there, we did so many fun activities that allowed me to grow closer to the other students on the trip and have formed friendships that are still strong to this day. Our welcoming experience in Alaska was thanks to an incredible family that showed us around making our stay more memorable. We had the opportunity to go bouldering, explore shops, try different foods, and even learn from the locals a traditional friendship dance. However, what I enjoyed the most was the time spent as a leader for the Vacation Bible School at a local church. I knew that God was working in my life because the joy I experienced led to my volunteering for Impact Kids and Nursery here at Church of the Palms. This has led me to know how much impact I have on others by being a leader and spreading the word of the Lord. Upon my return from Alaska, there were only a few weeks until Montreat, another memorable experience with youth group. We took a bus for this trip, and even though it was a long drive, I enjoyed learning more about my friends, the other students, and my youth leaders. When we arrived, we settled into a house that, we would, that would be our home for the week. While we were there, we participated in worship, where we learned many new songs, connecting groups, where we played games that encouraged us to work with other students, small groups, where we dove a little more into the word of the week, joy, and what it meant to us and the difference between happiness and joy. At the end of each day, we would enjoy an amazing home-cooked meal provided by Miss Heather, Miss Rogers, and Dale, and then split up into our back home groups. During this time is when I truly felt joy and could feel God's presence as we reflected on the day's lessons. In summary, my involvement with youth group has provided me with many amazing opportunities, from amazing trips such as Alaska and Montreat, to reading scripture during service, or participating in the new high school worship team, where each Sunday night I get to play the cajon and lead fellow high school students in worship songs, are just a few ways that my faith journey has brought me closer to God and deepened my understanding of him. It has also helped me feel more confident in my ability to lead and grow in my own faith with the Lord. I was also able to lead a special worship song in the 5 p.m. Christmas service. 
I was so grateful for all my experiences with COP and thank the members for making it possible for our youth group to have these amazing opportunities and the many more I hope to come. DJ and Sean are two students who did not grow up in Church of the Palms. We've often have, um, have had students get to share who were once baby Jesus in our Christmas Eve service when, when they were young. Um, but that's not DJ and Sean's story. Um, and I think of how through God's guidance and work, they found themselves getting to be a part of the Church of the Palms family. DJ was simply invited by a friend to participate in our, fall in our uh, middle school fall retreat. And that trip was one of the first times um, that he actually spent time with us. And uh, I connected with Sean's mom through another parent uh, and had coffee with her before Sean or her older sister Mia ever uh, got to participate in student ministry. And Sean's older sister Mia was one of our summer interns this past summer. And then Sean's mom, Jen, helped uh, coordinate all of the details to hold a successful Christmas scavenger hunt several weeks ago. And so DJ and Sean both didn't grow up in Church of the Palms, but Church of the Palms has grown into a second home for them, uh, like it has for many of our children and students involved in family ministry. Now, God has always been at work in this community of faith believers and continues to be at work through students inviting their friends, through parents sharing about experiences that their children have had, and our congregation keeping our students and families in prayer. And families serving together in our food pantry around holidays or getting to participate in events like Rise Against Hunger. This congregation and the family ministry leaders have helped to foster a community that our families enjoy being a part of and invite their friends to come and see what God is doing. So God has always been at work in DJ and Sean's life ever before they ever showed up here at Church of the Palms. But because of the way that our congregation loves and supports our families, they were granted opportunities, excuse me, there were opportunities for them to experience Christ in unique ways and lean in to ask, how is God making me new? Through opportunities like Montreat, like our mission trip, like the Cedar Kirk trips that Impact Kids participates in, like our middle school fall retreat and more. Church of the Palms fans the flame and nourishes these relationships with Christ to build disciples who love God and love neighbor. And while we were only able to hear from DJ and Sean this morning, there are similar stories in Impact Kids, across student ministry, and in our young adult ministry. God is making all things new, especially in the lives of our families. And this morning, as we enter into 2024 and we look ahead to all we have planned, we pray about how God is guiding us this year. We look forward to our Cedar Kirk trips, to our senior retreat, to our middle school mission trip, to Montreat, and our homeless sleepover. And we want to invite you to partner with us in supporting what God is doing in the lives of our families. And the most important way that you can be doing that is to join us in prayer. If you would like to be in prayer for a specific student, you're welcome to contact me directly, and I would be happy to share um, a name of a student and assign you a student to pray for daily. But joining us in prayer for our students as they journey through school and their families and that their families feel supported um, is such a blessing. If you feel led to give financially, our family ministry sponsorship campaign goal this year is $65,000 which is going to subsidize the cost of all our family ministry special events to make sure that no student or child is not afforded the opportunity to participate. I am always available for coffee. If you would like to learn more about family ministry or learn how to uh, be more involved in supporting our families, please don't hesitate to reach out. But as you look forward to all 2024 has in store, we're looking forward to seeing how God's action in the lives of our students and families is going to open doors for even more to experience the good news of Jesus Christ. So thank you for letting us share with you guys this morning, and thank you for the ways that you support family ministry. God bless.
us pray. Lord, thank you that you give the gift of abundant, eternal life. You have said that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our God, in Christ's name we pray, amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the, fir the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning with the 15th verse. When they have finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you do know that I love you. Jesus said, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he has said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you, Jesus said to him. Feed my sheep very truly, I tell you. When you were younger, you used to fasten your own seatbelt and to go wherever you wished. But when you're grown old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten the seatbelt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Don't we have wonderful students here at Church of the Palms? Yes. So great. Gives us such hope, doesn't it? Um, speaking of you know, youth and new things, um, we at the, the worship planning team have been thinking a lot about how to perhaps introduce some uh, new hymns, new music, 
new songs into our worship life so that we can kind of be growing our musical repertoire. And so we thought one of the best ways to do that would be to uh, play like just for, as a sort of an introduction, play the tune of a song and that way maybe you start to get it in your brain and then when we get closer to it, we may play it again and then, you know, then we can be ready to sing it, you know, so. Anyway, so we thought we'd try that today and uh, Jen is gonna play through uh, the first verse of a song for us to be thinking about uh, singing in the future. So Jen Biev, take it away. <laughs> You know you weren't going to get away without something like that <laughs> after Michigan won their national championship on Monday. I've been waiting 15 years to do that, so hallelujah, finally got to that moment. All right, in order to recover, let us pray. By your grace and through your mercy, we pray, O oh God, that you will allow these words to come to point to the word just read and to the word made flesh in Jesus the Christ. For we pray this in his name. Amen. Many of you are aware that I am the proud owner of a 1985 antique Jeep CJ7. That is what is on the cover of your bulletin. It is older than my daughter, and it is not worn as well as she when I purchased it eight years ago, it had a six inch lift and super swamper tires and it made me look like an over the hill monster truck driver. It's not to say that I'm not over the hill, but certainly not a monster truck driver. I've since lowered the lift and shrunk the tires. Once I signed the title, I named my Jeep Willis, the original pronunciation of the name of the founder of the Willis Overland Company, which was awarded the contract to produce the first World War II Jeeps. These days, people call Jeeps Willys because of how the name is spelled, W-I-L-L-Y-S, but I prefer the original pronunciation, Willis. How's that for information you really don't care about? <laughs> So, like I said, I'm the proud owner of Willis. I like having an original, a classic, a car that has been around the block a few times. Willis is not in the best shape. A few things that have happened to him and been done to him over the years. He doesn't have the same motor, doesn't have the same seats. He now has wheels and tires still too big for any 65-year-old pastor to be riding on top of. But I love Willis because Willis has character. As I said, Willis has been around the block a few times and he now and he has all the proof to show it. He has character. He has been patched, repainted poorly, lights on the dashboard that don't work, a steering column that has enough give to it that you feel like you're piloting an oil tanker. Willis has had a hard life and has a lot to show for it. Nevertheless, Willis still draws some attention from old and young alike. Old men stop me in parking lots and reminisce about the times when they had their own Jeep, and they ask me questions about mine that I cannot answer. One day, while stopped at a stoplight, a carload of high school girls pulled up alongside of me and pronounced me cool. Strictly because of the ride I was sitting in. Think of that, somebody calling me cool. There's a first and last time for everything. <laughs> Over the last eight years, I've had Willis in the shop about 100 times. Real car guys fix their Jeeps in their driveways. Fake car guys have them towed to people who know what they're doing. A new oil pan here, a rebuilt carburetor there. The list goes on and on. But Willis keeps on keeping on increasing, hear this, increasing in value. A little bit in dollars, but a lot in character. Willis is appreciated for where he's been. You've been, I've been tempted to somehow restore Willis, take him back to his original, make him look like he never left the driveway, but then he really wouldn't be Willis. He would lose that face only a mother could love. And he would lose the very essence of who he is. Willis is old, but Willis keeps becoming something more. His value increases with every mile he traverses. 
Our theme for the year is a verse that comes out of the book of Revelation where God looks out over all creation and promises that God will make all things new. The context for the promise is the vision of what happens to us after we die, that, we come, that when we come into the heavenly kingdom, something new happens, and part of the something new that happens is that all those hard things we've had to face in this life aren't going to be happening anymore. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, the apostle writes, and death shall be no more, and neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Yes, the new thing is that the forming of who we are will no longer come at the hands of the hard things, but will come purely from the hands of love and grace. Such is the good news we pastors get to pronounce at every memorial service. But the Bible tells us also that God is not just making a new creation in heaven, but that God is making a new creation here and now with people like you and me. And often the new creation comes as a result of the hard things, the bumps and the bruises, the dents and the dings. And it's true, isn't it? We are being made into something new just about every day. Every day brings about an experience or a learning or a conversation or a disappointment or a struggle that teaches us not only about the nature of life, but also about what we are becoming. It seems that when God created us human beings, he created us not as originals to be kept in our boxes or in our garages, but that we were created to become something. That behold, God is always making something new in us. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, writes the Apostle Paul. And too often that verse gets misinterpreted to say that only the few whom God loves are the ones whom God makes things work out for. No, but the truth is God loves everyone everybody and God calls everybody from every moment of our creation we are in the process of becoming something and for those who know of this love and of this grace and of this call we can look at every up and down as a way for God to make something new out of us because God is always into becoming Whenever I'm asked to tell my story, the first thing I usually say is that my life got started by winning the lottery. And winning the lottery for me means that I was born into a loving family who not only loved God and me, but gave much of their lives over to serving God. I was born, as they say, on third base. I had a lot going for me. But that's not the end of my story. That's the beginning of my story. And there was lots more becoming to become. And there were mountaintops and there were valleys. There were joys and there were hurts. There was Easy Street and there was the School of Hard Knocks. And I suspect what allowed me to become most were the hard things. It was the hard things that taught me who I was and whose I was. Wrapping the family car with the family in it around a telephone pole at the age of 16, holding only, holding only a driver's permit. That will teach you something. Being made captain of the high school basketball team only to lead us to the worst record in the high school's history. <laughs> Going down in the record book as the only captain to shoot at the wrong basket. <laughs> that will teach you something being appointed to the director of a freshman men's dormitory at the ripe old age of 20, and then realizing that the 128 freshmen I inherited had watched too many times the movie Animal House. <laughs> it was the worst year of my life with threats and felonies, attempted suicides, attempted murder, all in one year in one building. That will teach you something. Hearing from your seminary professor, that maybe you picked the wrong profession, having your heart broken, having your leadership called into question, having friends betray you, having your mother die young. All of this is nothing unusual or extreme. Folks have had life a whole lot harder than me. But for every one of us, life sends its zingers. And the zingers make us wonder, what is God really up to? 
And the truth is what God is always up to is not causing the zingers to happen. God doesn't zing us. But making the zingers somehow work out for good. Allowing the hard things to shape us and build us into the character of the one who's always looking for God's purpose in life. That's what I love about our story from John today when Jesus pulls Peter aside. Peter, who has made a career of always seeming to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Peter, who sinks like a rock in the Sea of Galilee. Peter, who says something so ignorant that Jesus calls him the devil of hell. Peter, who puffs out his chest and promises that he will never let Jesus down, only to do that very thing hours later, and not just once, but twice, not just twice, but three times. Peter has got more dents and dings than Willis will ever have. But Jesus pulls Peter aside and says to him, Peter, I am in the becoming business. We are going to take all the zings and hurts and disappointments and faulty steering and creaky axles and we're going to make something out of it. We are going to create a new thing filled with the old things. We are going to form in you a character that has learned from both the mountaintops and the valleys and we are going to put you right where you need to be, shepherding my people And who better to understand my wayward sheep, Jesus says, than a sheep who's gone AWOL. And Peter goes on to shepherd the sheep, and still he makes mistakes, and still he says the wrong thing. But what Peter knows now that he didn't know before is that he is loved by his precious Lord unconditionally, and that the Lord is doing a new thing with old parts and that the Lord is working together all things for good, and that the Lord is leading Peter down the path of becoming, and when he can, and that he can walk humbly and maybe even a little proudly, and we can walk humbly and maybe a little proudly with all the bumps and bruises, dents and dings, knowing that we are a classic in the making We are of value. We are a cool ride because of what God has done to make all things work together for good. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.